Of course, we're inhaling this. After it's sprayed into the sky, we are inhaling this, uh, and it's, it's uh, without a doubt hurting people. It, it definitely is. So I, I, like you, believe it is in part um, uh, population reduction. And did you want me to touch, I know I've been talking for a long time, uh, on, on the, uh, the new aluminum-resistant seat? Yes, yes, because that's something I just recently found out about, and, and I think um, there may be a lot of people who haven't heard about that yet. Mm-hmm. Sure, I'd love to touch on that. And one of the places that, that we filmed uh, was Hawaii, and we went out there for a week, and it was a beautiful trip. We stayed on an organic farm, and uh, it was a beautiful uh, place to stay, and uh, we were completely off of the grid, and... Uh, away from any store's corporate influence. And it was beautiful because in the morning I would wake up and I'd, I'd go to the trees and literally pick my breakfast off of the uh-huh. trees and we would and pick our food. And there's a group that lives in, in this area and it's a, it's a very free uh, type of living. You know, there's no going to work and there's no monetary exchange. And uh, the concern there is they're starting to see declines in the yield of, of the food and... Uh, the coconut trees are also softening, uh, which is a bad sign. And uh, uh-huh. they are getting sprayed very heavy off of Hawaii, and, and we uh, did encourage many of the locals to test, and, of course, they did, and they found massive amounts of aluminum, barium, and strontium. And the concern there is that these programs may be in part uh, an agenda to kill off anything that's natural and organic by destroying the soil uh, and then replacing... Uh, uh, um, the food supply with new GMO seeds. And, of course, like uh-huh. you had mentioned, we uncovered a new aluminum-resistant seed, which was uh, made at Cornell University. It's owned by uh, the USDA and the Brazilian government, and, uh, and uh, that's the concern. The concern is that they're destroying the soil so that nobody can be completely independent. And after I left that part of the island, I, I just admired uh, the way that everybody lived because it was a total free place to live, and they were completely dependent on natural seeds and in and, and weather and everything, but in, in 10 years, if the spraying continues, my heart just went out, because if they can't grow their own food, what are they going to do? Are they going to have to go to companies such as Monsanto and other companies? And if so, what are the requirements for that? Right, and that is, right. uh, that is the, <clears throat> loss, the, the last bit of freedom, that, that our God-given freedom that we have that it appears that they're trying to take away. So deeply concerning to those of us who, who are aware of this. Oh, absolutely. And I think there was a bill just recently, uh, I, I think it was 510, that had to do with controlling the uh, organic food supplies. And um, I think that it was, uh, I think that it was not passed, but it was a very dangerous bill. And so there, there are attacks and attempts on our life, and they're so subtle in some ways that we don't see it because we're so wrapped up in trying to survive that most people don't feel like they have time to investigate anything anymore. And so we just go on in our dream worlds, but these elements are falling to the ground. The, Whatever is being sprayed there on a daily basis it doesn't stay up there, and it falls to the ground. So eventually it gets into the plant leaves, it gets into the ground soil, it, the, the animals eat it, and it's going to create greater and greater toxicity until nothing can live in it. Uh, not to mention the fact that some samples have uh, included uh, very strange elements in them. Um, other uh, researchers have discovered uh, bacteria and blood, and uh, nanoparticles, and some have even linked the chemtrails to the Morgellons disease, which is uh, another phenomenon that seems to be cropping up more frequently that isn't supposed to exist that nobody has. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, yes, we're, this is a very dangerous uh, situation, and it's especially dangerous in that it's done without any oversight, any control, and any uh, accountability. And it's done without our consent, which is even worse. I mean, they're just doing it, and, you know, if we die, that's, well, okay, goodbye. 
you had a nice life. Uh, just thank, be thankful that we ended it for you. You know, it's, it just seems to be an attitude of uh, just complete. Uh, I, I don't know what to call it, but uh, it's it's frightening. It it, it is so, frightening, Lance. And it, go ahead. So when you went through the uh, when you went through these different states. Did you run across people who were quite aware of what was going on and who, uh, did you run across people who were uh, uh, identifying illnesses upon being sprayed? Well, we absolutely did. And again, we, we investigated this from a scientific standpoint. Um, for the first time in the history of this movement, we spoke to credible scientists, we spoke with physicians. Uh, we spoke with politicians. Um, Senator Karen Johnson spoke with us, is, was well aware of the issue and was very open about it and deeply concerned about it, bless her heart. Um, she's been great for the movement. But uh, absolutely, you know, we, we have. We met many people, um, including areas in, uh, in Northern California where, where um, almost the entire populations have uh, respiratory illnesses that, that they can't kick. But, even go deeper than that, you had mentioned uh, Morgellons, and I did. You know, we met several people who had Morgellons, which is, again, believed to be from the aerosol spraying. We didn't cover that too deeply in the film, and, and the reason was this. When we sat down, my goal for, for the film was really to reach out to the, the masses, and, and, and right. the goal was to make people, A, aware that these programs are real and that they're right. a threat to uh, ecology and human health, and I think that we conclusively prove that, and, and these other issues are so important and they need to be covered, one of my hopes for doing the film was was to get people activated into covering this at, at, a, at a deeper level. I mean, we covered a depth, and what we uncovered was deeply shocking. Aluminum, barium, and strontium is just terrible. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but, <laughs> but gosh, this, this goes much deeper than, than what yeah. we covered. We, we hope to bring the people perhaps into a part two or, you know, have somebody else uh, uh, produce a film or, or even write about some of these other issues like Morgan Ellen's because, man, let me tell you, it's, it's blowing my mind, and I know that they're spraying up there. Yeah. I, you know, we, we know conclusively that they are. Well, you know, I first found out about this up here in Northern California, um, where I've been living for about, oh, say, 12, 14 years. And I had a, a tenant on the property that rented a small house, and she was kind of an old hippie, and she was the first one to point up to the skies and say, did you know that they had chemtrails up there? And take a look at them. And she pointed out the crisscross design and how they spread out and, and I kind of nodded my head, and you know, uh, it kind of went uh, went right through me. Kind of, I noticed it, but you know, it didn't really make an impact. But it was uh, ten years later that I started noticing it overhead daily, and my respiratory—I uh, was having respiratory problems and coughing, uh, like a tickling cough that I wouldn't stop, <clears throat> and. Um, that's when I began to note, look up and see what was going on, and it's and it was pretty scary. Uh, so I've seen this going on out here for over ten years, and uh, you know that's so. It just seems so sneaky and and so typical of the of the military and the government and the powers that be to go ahead and do it. And then uh, when they get caught, they probably will have some great excuse like, we're doing this to help you. But in the meantime, everybody denies doing it. Nobody knows anything about it. And now you've got the geoengineers talking about doing it in the future. So they're setting us up to, you know, to say, well, we're going to do it today. We're starting this chemtrail project or this uh, geoengineering project. And then they can come out and say, "Yeah, well, yeah, we're doing it. We just started it. So this kind of sneaky operation that's been going on behind our backs about everything has to come to light, and it's got to be – it's got to stop. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we we don't know how much of the future there will be for the ecology and also – Human health, if it continues. But you, yeah, brought up a great point, and, and you had spoken about geoengineers coming public, and they're starting to speak only 
of what they say is the plausibility of doing these programs, but there's literally a mountain of evidence that proves that these have been ongoing for about 10 to 12 years. What they're doing is, is putting together the sales strategy to sell this to an unsuspecting public. And G, uh, as G. Edward Griffin had, had stated in the film, he said, you know, when it comes out, and it definitely will, and it is coming out, undoubtedly they will say, well, we're doing this for the benefit of mankind. We're doing this to thwart this supposed global warming crisis. So we're saving you. But as many of us know, it's not in the best interest of people like you or I, Lance. It's in the best interest of a select group of people who have these this uh, th- this goal to create world government, and part of that goal is to reduce the Earth's population. Part of that goal is to control the food food supply. Part and of that the goal water. is to control, yeah. and the water and everything. So what they're after and is the control. air. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but and if they can they sell it, a, yeah. If they can sell it to the public and get support of this, which they've been very effective in the past, yeah, then. They can do it. So it is our job as, as, as awakened uh, uh, world uh, godly people, it's our job to speak the truth and, and to let people know really what's going on. That's why I admire you for covering this and, and doing the work that, that you're doing. It's so important right now that, that we just speak to people and make them aware of this. And we have. We've seen an incredible, uh, God, in the past six to seven months, we've just seen an incredible awakening um, with mm. this issue, I think I think the film is, is a good tool as well. We we've had people literally. It's it's been uh, shown that we have people doing screenings around the world. It's been translated in the past three weeks into, I believe, mm. seven different languages. So the support is oh, wonderful, wonderful, and incredible. Yeah, that's good news because it's and yet I know that your film is is a very easy to digest film. It's not at all. Uh, sinister or diabolical. It's, it's really an inquiry. And you really did target it, uh, to hit the mainstream audience. So, because for people who don't know anything about this, you really have to be kind of gentle. <laughs> you can't just say, well, they're doing this and they're doing that. You know, I mean, Alex Jones does that, but, uh, you gotta, sometimes he's a little bit much. Uh, and so most people need a kind of a gentle approach to say, oh, well, what is this? Well, let's ask a question. Let's go to the next question. Well, that's interesting. And, you know, I find that to be a very uh, positive way to get the truth out there, and it looks like you're successful at it. So your screenings have done real well then. Uh, where did you screen first? Well, we, we had a wor- world premiere in Atlanta, uh, and it was a great event. Just had under 400 people attend. Uh, oh. Most of who came came um, to our after we had a, had a party uh, afterwards, and I had an opportunity to to speak to a lot of people. A little overwhelming because this was my first film, and I'm not used to all of this attention. But you know, again, I believe it's a calling. So I have to I have to uh, walk in in that calling and, and speak truth. To this issue, but yes, it, it has been incredibly effective. We have had people now around the world, as, as I said, uh, who are scheduling screenings. Um, we, I'm talking to folks in New York, Chicago, uh, people in Australia. There are a couple. I think there's one tonight and uh, another one tonight in Chicago. So, literally, I've had about 35 to 40 people in the past week contact me for artwork, promotional artwork to move forward with screenings. Of course, I'll be in Reading uh, a week from, uh, I believe, two weeks on Friday, and we'll be having a big screening there, Sacramento yeah. as well. So we're we're doing the tour, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, so what's, what's next uh, for for you with uh, with the film? I mean, uh, do, do you think that this is going to create a kind of a nexus point or a turning point for us to begin to break this uh, secrecy that's around us that's going on? Well, I, I know it is because of, of the momentum and, and what we've seen just in the past month. I mean, it has taken off. We've had more support with this film even before it was released than I believe any 